Hello, welcome back to my channel. I decided it was time to get another video out. Sorry for that, I had to adjust that. But I thought, decided it was time to get another video out. Um, not another one that I feel is of great importance. Um, and the reason that I have this cross up here is to remind us what Jesus did for us. As you see, these are spikes. Um, and yes, Jesus had really big spikes driven through his hands and his feet. Yes, he did. So that's a kind. It's like that is a reminder of what he went through so that we could be we could be saved. All right. Um, so my subject for the video, it's called Jesus is coming for his bride. Are you prepared? Now I have a whole bunch of Bible verses which will show you that it does say in the Bible that we are going to be taken up to be with God, to be with Jesus. So I wanted to write down all of these Bible verses to show you. And if you would like, you can look them up for yourself. Okay, so first we're going to start with 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept my word about patience and endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. First Thessalonians 4.16, which was supposed to go before 4.17. For the Lord himself will descend from the heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will always be with the Lord so before we get taken everyone who is as the Bible calls it asleep all the people who died before us will be caught up and taken and we will join them in the clouds Revelation 1 7 Behold he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him and all tribes of the earth will wail will wail or will wail will wait <laughs> well on account of him even so Amen so, everyone's going to see him when he comes. Every eye is going to see him. There isn't one person that will not see him. So, even all the doubters, everyone will see him. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet... For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed. We are not going to have these bodies in heaven. We are not going to look the same in heaven. We are going to have 
bodies that won't be sick, bodies that won't decay, bodies that won't deteriorate. We are going to have celestial bodies. 1 Thessalonians 5.2 For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Which means what? When a thief comes, you don't know when they're coming. Neither will you know when the Lord is coming. Mark 13, 32. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Jesus himself does not know when that day will come. Only God the Father knows. 2 Peter 3.10 But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Luke 21, 39, or I mean 34 to 36, sorry. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dis dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Hebrews 9.28 So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many will appear a second time not to deal with sin but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him 1st Thessalonians 5 3 while people are saying there is peace and security then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape Let me explain that. We were told to look for signs. We were told to look for things that were going to come to pass before Jesus came back. And yes, we have seen things happen many, many years ago. But things have been gradually getting worse and worse and worse. And that's why they say like labor pains. Because if you look around us right now, we are, there's many, 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 many labor pains and they're closer and closer and closer together with everything that's going on. So keep your eyes open and keep watching because there's more to come. So, if you look around you, all you see is hurt, hatred, destruction, race wars, the shedding of innocent blood, idol worship, and so much more. People are fighting over everything imaginable. Bible prophecy is unfolding before our eyes, but some don't see it, or they choose not to. They don't believe so they're in doubt. People think that because they lived a good life that they'll be spared God's wrath. But that couldn't be further from the truth. We are all born into sin. No one can or will see heaven unless he is born again. Jesus is going to be calling his bride home very soon. Will you be going to meet him in the sky? Or will you choose to face God's wrath. I have a calling, me personally, from God, to tell people about this 
and to give them give them the good news which is that you too can have a relationship with our Lord and Savior time is short and he could he could come back at any time so please turn away from this wicked world give your life to Jesus God doesn't want to see anyone suffer through the tribulation and spend eternity in the lake of fire. He is giving people a chance to repent and to accept Jesus. If this reaches even one person, then I've done my job. I don't want to see people left behind. I don't want to see people suffer. I'm not begging people and I'm not forcing people, but what I'm trying to do is open your eyes so that you can see what is going on in this world. Look at the weather patterns. Look at all of the storms that are out there this year. Look at all the earthquakes that are happening. And there's been a lot of them. Look at Look what's going on with, with everything. I mean, open your eyes and look, and you will see. Take the blinders off and look and pay attention. Our country, the United States, is in dire need, dire need of God. And yes, there are many people who are saved and many people who do love God and do follow God. But there's also a lot who don't or just won't. They refuse because they think that their way is the right way and they don't think that they can be saved or they don't want to be saved. Well, it's happening in other countries too. It's happening all over the world. If you look, you'll see it's happening everywhere. We have riots going on all over the place. And you know why? Race wars. There is no race better than another. We were, crea we were all created equal in God's eyes. God loves each and every one of us the same. He doesn't pick and choose and say, I love this race better than that race. He loves everybody. I saw a thing the other day on, um, I think it was on Facebook, of a brown egg and a white egg. And then the eggs cracked open. And what did they look like inside? They were the same. We are all the same inside. And there's no reason why we should be having race wars. It's absolutely ridiculous. There are so many hate crimes going on and it's not right and God doesn't think it's right either. That is a command that Jesus said. We are supposed to love. Let all you do be done in love. We are supposed to love our enemies. We're supposed to love everybody. We are not supposed to hold hatred in our hearts. Hatred is not something that God likes. Even if it's someone that you think you could never forgive in a million years, let it go. It's not worth it. Let it go. Repent. Ask God to forgive you. And if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will be forgiven of any and all sins that you have ever committed, ever. It doesn't matter. There is no one sin greater than another in God's eyes. So he will forgive you and he wants to forgive you, but he can't, not unless you accept his gift. And his gift was his one and only son so if you accept his gift 
you will be forgiven. But if you push his gift to the side, then you will not be forgiven. And when that day comes, when that trumpet sounds, and all of, all of God's people who did accept Jesus are gathered up to go with him, and you didn't choose to accept him at that point, it is too late. You can't be screaming up in the sky for Jesus to come back for you. Because then your only other choice will be to live out the tribulation. And it will be a very, very, very hard time for anyone who accepts Jesus after that happens. Because you'll be living under the laws of the Antichrist. You will be living under the laws of the world. You will not be able to go to church or gather together with other believers because they will find you. And the only way out, the only way out to actually be able to be with everyone else will be if you die for our Lord and Savior. Because if not, then you will be with all the other non-believers in the lake of fire for eternity. You will not ever be given another chance. This is your chance. This is your time. This is your opportunity. All you need to do is say a prayer. You need to admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you're a sinner. You need to believe in your heart that Jesus was sent by God to walk on this earth and he was put to death on a cross after he suffered terribly and he shed his blood so that you could be saved You need to admit, believe, and commit. You need to commit your life to Jesus. Ask him into your heart. Tell, tell him you want him to be Lord of your life. And he will. So I can help you through a prayer. Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. I have done wrong against you. I know and I believe in my heart that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus, to this earth to suffer, to die, on that cross and shed his blood for me so that I could be forgiven of all of my sins and I believe that he rose three days later and he is alive and he is coming back Lord Jesus I ask you now come into my heart be Lord of my life thank you Jesus amen and that's all you have to do. And if you said that prayer, you are saved. You are sealed. You are good to go. You will be there in the heavens with everyone else who is saved. You do not have to worry. Now you need to get into your Bible. You need to read your Bible daily. You need to pray daily. Ask God for strength. Ask God to help you with your walk. Stay away from things that you know you shouldn't be doing or be around. If it's people, then 
stay away from people who are going to try to sway you away from God. You want to stay with people who are close to God. Get yourself into a church, a Bible-believing church. If you cannot attend a church, then you can find one online. We do services on, for the least of them, on YouTube every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can always come and join us for our service. But get yourself connected. And for those of you who chose not to say that prayer, well, I just pray over each and every one of you that God would open your heart. And it may not be today. It may be tomorrow. It may be the next day. But I pray that it would be sooner than later because we don't know when Jesus is coming for us. So please don't wait. If you already know Jesus, then I ask that you would please get out there, spread the word, tell people, tell people that Jesus is coming back very soon. And that they need to get right with God. Let's all get out there and let's all get people saved. That is the most important thing we can do right now. We don't want to see our brothers and sisters suffering, especially if it's somebody that we know, somebody that we care about. Make sure you tell everybody, everyone in your family, your friends, get the word out there. And if you don't want to do it, send them here. Show them this video. But do something. We need to, we need to make sure that we have more people going up than people going down. Because it will sadden everyone. It will sadden God the most. He doesn't want to see people suffer. He does it. He loves everybody. He loves you. He loves all of us. And he wants to see us happy and saved and living, living a life that he wants us to live. He doesn't want to see us suffering for eternity. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I just pray right now. I pray peace on everybody. I pray for God's love to come down on each and every one of you. And God's peace to come down on each and every one of you. And I pray that God would touch you. I pray that God would touch your heart. And I thank you for being here today. I thank you. Father God, be with these people. Please, touch these people's hearts. Touch these people's lives. I just pray, Lord God, that you would just open up their hearts, Lord. Let them feel your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Like I said, thank you for watching. God bless each and every one of you. And I will talk to you all very, very soon.